Every drop of water that falls in the 107 square miles surrounding Green Lake eventually ends up in the lake. That's one reason why farmers go above and beyond to make sure the stormwater runoff from their farms is clean and free of nutrient pollution. Farmers in the Green Lake watershed have a lot to be proud of. In just five years, they've installed over $1.8 million in best management practices to improve their soil health and downstream water quality. We have a valuable resource that we have to take care of. There is no doubt about it. In my opinion, I think the, the biggest impact to, to Green Lake itself is no doubt from uh, soil erosion. When you have soil erosion, you're losing your topsoil and there's a, there's a cost to that. Soil has nutrients tied to it, the big one being phosphorus, and then the phosphorus would promote weed growth when it gets in the surface waters. Keeping the soil in place is gonna keep the lake clean. Since 56% of the Green Lake watershed is agricultural, farmers play an important role in ensuring that we can achieve a cleaner, healthier lake. Everything that we address in the farm is certainly first around keeping the soil in place. Over my career, I've just seen farmers become better stewards of the land. We want to try to take care of the water that does run off the farm, have it as clean as possible. We all care about the water, we really do. Best management practices, or BMPs, are structures and practices used to keep soil and nutrients on the land and out of the lake. Farmers experiment with different combinations of BMPs to see what works best for their land and their operation. The first line of defense against erosion is keeping the soil healthy. One way farmers improve soil health is by limiting soil disturbance through the use of no-till or never-till practices. And normally, why you figure you're going to do some, some working up of the ground, and with never-till, you just decide, I'm never going to dig up my ground. When you dig it up, it loosens it, and if you get a big rain, land will tend to erode. Conserve the land that you've got. That's what conservation tillage is kind of all about. To supplement no-till practices, cover crops and crop residue help increase the soil's organic matter, increase infiltration, and reduce the likelihood of soil erosion during rain events. Cover crops are basically crops that you would put in after your regular crop. The cover crop itself, when it's laying on the soil, is protecting that soil because it'll intercept the raindrops so that it's a cushion. When you go down A, well, you'll see the cover crops of not only mine, many other farmers. To prevent runaway soil from entering the lake after large storm events, many farmers install sediment basins or terraces. If there is soil detachment and soil transport, that then the basins are there then to catch the uh, soil runoff. I've constructed on my own cost and our own uh, miles and miles of terraces. The idea is that the water would slow down, it would drop its sediment, and then the water that would go through, continue on down through the watershed, would have less soil and nutrients tied to it. In addition to erosion, farmers have defenses against nutrient runoff. Many farmers develop nutrient management plans to calculate the exact amount of fertilizers the crops need based on nutrients already available in the soil. That way, there are no extra nutrients available to wash into the lake. The nutrient management plan is a guide for the farmer to apply nutrients, whether it would be manure or whether it would be commercial fertilizers that they may be buying. So when we put it on our fields, we actually know just by how many loads we put on a field about what we're getting on for manure. It's not just a, a guess like, yeah, I think this is what it is. Um, we're, we're, we're guessing pretty close. We're trying not to overapply nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash just because it costs you too much money and it's, and it's got a real good chance of winding up in the watershed. Farmers have a difficult task. They must run a profitable business while reducing their impact on the environment. While challenging, farmers have shown that they care immensely about Green Lake's water quality by working so hard to protect the watershed. I believe that we've come a long ways and in the last five years, we've put over 120 best management practices in. You know, we just gotta take care of the land so that it'll keep supporting you. If you take care of it, it'll, it'll take care of you. Most people that are really into conservation believe it so strongly that it's just part of their makeup. And that's the way I feel that I am. Really blessed to be part of God's green earth, just growing the crops and growing animals. We like to think we're changing the world one acre at a time. We all have a part to play in keeping Green Lake clean. Farmers in the Green Lake watershed have shown that they are willing to step up and do what they can to ensure that Big Green continues to be a healthy and clean resource for everyone to enjoy. To hear more about what farmers and shoreline owners are doing to protect the lake, come to our first annual Green Lake Area Conservation Field Day on Saturday, August 26th. 
For more information and to RSVP, check out the Green Lake Association's website at greenlakeassociation.com.